Now that we've looked at how to determine if a function is increasing or decreasing, we want to take that knowledge and we want to extend it to helping us determine what's happening at each of our critical values. Remember that we talked about before that at every single um, relative maximum or relative minimum, so every turn, every hill or valley, there's a critical value there first because every time I make that turn or make that hill or make that valley, my slope is hitting zero and we find critical numbers by hitting, setting our slope equal to zero or our derivative equal to zero. However, we did talk that just because there's a critical value there doesn't necessarily mean that there has to be a maximum or minimum. Um, remember um, I demonstrated the x cubed function. If I look again, if I draw it off to the side here, just that x cubed function, I have that turn that has a slope of zero. However, I do not have any kind of relative maximum or relative minimum there. So how are we going to determine what's happening at our critical value? Well, if our derivative changes from negative to positive, so I have a negative slope and it changes to a positive slope, I can say I have a relative minimum there. I have that valley. If, on the other hand, my derivative changes from positive to negative, I can say that I have a hill there and I have a relative maximum. Now, on the other hand, if my, my derivative, if my slope does not change any kind of sign, like on the cube function here, my, um, my slope or my derivative is positive, it turns and then remains positive, it's not a maximum or a minimum. It's just a slope of zero. It doesn't, it doesn't actually come to that hill or that valley. So let's look at an example where we would use the first derivative test. So I first have to determine if the function is increasing or decreasing. So I'm going to do exactly like I did in the first video. To determine if it's increasing or decreasing, I'll first find my derivative. And I'll set my derivative equal to zero so that I can find any relative maximums or minimums, or excuse me, any critical values. So I see my derivative would be zero when x was negative three. So once again, I'm going to set up my intervals. So I'll go from negative infinity to negative three, and then from negative three to infinity. So once I've found my intervals, I'll then find my test points. So from negative three to negative infinity, maybe I choose negative four, and from negative three to infinity, I choose zero. So then I'll find the sine of f prime at my test points. So when I plug negative four in, <clears throat> I'm going to get negative 4 plus 3 is a negative, so 2 times a negative is a negative. When I plug 0 in, I get a positive. Therefore, I'm decreasing here from negative infinity to negative 3, and I'm increasing here from negative 3 up to infinity. Well, if I was decreasing and now I'm increasing, notice that I'm going to have a minimum here. So I'm going to go ahead and say that I have a relative minimum at the point negative 3 comma. Well, in order to figure out the rest of my point, I know that x is negative 3. To find y, I'll plug back into my original equation. So solving for y, I get y or f of x equals negative 3 squared plus 6 times negative 3 plus 17, giving me 9 minus 18 plus 17, which gives me uh, 8. So there is going to be my conclusion about my relative minimums and relative maximums. Since I only changed um, uh, direction in terms of uh, my slope or changed sign of my slope at that one point, I do not have any other um, relative minimums, and it looks like I don't have any relative maximums. And again, don't forget that I cannot find absolute maximums and absolute minimums since I didn't have a closed interval. I can only find relative maximums and relative minimums. Um, I do have one more example, um, a great one for you to try. Hey, now that you've had a chance to try an example, let's go ahead and look at this. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find my derivative. I notice that in order to find my derivative, I'm going to have to set up my quotient rule.
Now that I've set up my quotient rule, I can go ahead and find my first derivative so of my overall function. So it's derivative of the first times the second. Minus the derivative of the second times the first. Well, 2x times x squared is 2x cubed all over the second squared. Now that I have that, I can go ahead and I can find my relative, or excuse me, my critical values. So I have 2x cubed minus 9 minus 2x cubed all over x squared minus 9 squared. So um, I can see that my x cubes are going to drop out. So I'll have negative 9 over x squared minus 9 squared equals 0. So I see that my function is never going to be 0 since the way a fraction becomes 0 is when the numerator equals 0. Um, however, I do see that it would be undefined. Um, I would have a denominator of 0 and therefore my function or my um, function's derivative would be 0 if x was either 3 or negative 3. So setting up my intervals, I'll go from negative infinity up to negative 3, from negative 3 up to 3, and from 3 up to infinity. I pick my test point, so let's say negative 4, 0, and 4. After I pick my test point, I check the sign of f prime. So the sign of my derivative, if I plug negative 4 in, um, so if I plug negative 4 in here, I'll have a negative on top, um, a positive on the bottom, so I'll have a negative here. If I plug 0 into this function, I'll have a negative on top and a positive on the bottom, so a negative over a positive. Um, so here I had a negative over a positive, here I have a negative over a positive, so my overall sign is negative. If I plugged 4 in, I'll have a negative over a positive which will also give me a negative. So I notice that I'm decreasing on my entire interval. Decreasing, decreasing, decreasing. Since I am decreasing over my entire interval, since my derivative never changes sign, I would go ahead and I would say there are no relative extrema for this function. Um, also, again, just emphasizing the fact that I can also say there's no absolute extrema since I don't have a closed interval. And in order to have absolute extrema, I have to have that closed interval.